everyone, Sane Man here. This video is brought to you by a donation from John, and here's what he has to say. Hi, Sane Man, I enjoy all your presentations. I don't really have any questions because I'm 60 now, divorced, and I know the program. But I thought it would be funny if you did a video on the topic of male slavery. Maybe you could put in a picture of a female WW2 officer beating up some poor bugger. LOL. In 2003, I went to Russia and immigrated a bride who was almost okay at first but she had all the ingredients of a financial abuser. And after three years of financial abuse, I got an amicable divorce. I got that divorce because when the fighting got nearly out of control, she threatened to call the police. In five minutes, I was at the sheriff's office filing a domestic abuse report against her because my shirt was torn and I had scratches on my face. I'm a big guy, so she never had a chance of beating me up, but the whole thing was laughable. LOL cheers. Well, John, thanks for the donation as well as the topic. As for men being slaves to women, our psychology is such that we are free in our unfreedom. Mental and physical work will actually set us free from our minds and bodies eating themselves. Biologically, we're slaves looking for a master, and women are masters looking for slaves. However, once we find something else to enslave ourselves with, to set us free, we become free of women. As I was saying, as men, if we don't use our minds for a purpose greater than our own, or enslave ourselves to something or someone outside ourselves, we tend to get depressed, nihilistic, and maybe even suicidal. Again, we're free in our unfreedom. But to attract a mate to be consumed by her, we have to display a high level of intelligence before we get married and turn into Homer Simpson. I think of married men as once being butterflies. But once they settle down into a long-term relationship and fall in love, they turn into fat caterpillars. It's a metamorphosis to a lower form of intelligence for the sake of reproduction. Our old man's mind is like peacock feathers, and once he attracts a mate, his intellect is no longer needed. So it falls away because it's no longer mating season. A peacock loses his feathers quickly at the end of mating season, and they're usually gone within a week after they mate. Why wouldn't the male mind be the same way? The brain, after all, is the most expensive organ in the human body energy-wise, and the more intelligent a male is, the more likely he is to provide resources for a woman, so his intelligence needs to be displayed. What if inventors like Nikola Tesla went mad from using their minds too much instead of settling down and getting married? I know that I can't be creative or write very well when I'm in love. It's as if my IQ drops 10 to 20 points. I know the moment I'm free of relationships, my intelligence is restored. No doubt to attract yet another mate. When I find one, I'm usually happy, stupid, and a slave to her. But when I'm single, I'm a free man that's also anxious and smart. We want to feel useful to women and our children. That makes us feel whole even though it's ripping a hole through our minds. Maybe women are attracted to our intellect and want to enslave it for their own ends. But when they do, the intellect fades away once he's domesticated, so they seek out a smarter man elsewhere. We are slaves to our biology, and it wants us to be slaves to women for reproduction. When I decide to rebel against this, nature rewards me by punishing me with an overactive nervous system. I'm far more easily stimulated now than I was 5 to 10 years ago before I started this channel and before I was single. Maybe there's a psychological or physical price to pay for not settling down and instead revving up my mental engine all the time. Women are like slave masters that require a slave to feel happy. We're like slaves that require a slave master to be happy. When a woman has a man there to do what she wants him to do, she has kids. When she can't have kids, she has a cat or a dog and tries to coax them with treats to obey her cooch commands. As a man, if you don't have a wife and kids to enslave yourself to, most guys can't feel content laying down their life for their career. It's unfulfilling, so they have to find something greater to give their lives to. In the past, such men might become soldiers or sailors and fight for their king and country, because it gave them that purpose. They might give their time and life energy to science and invention like Nikola Tesla did, to better the human race. Either you enslave yourself to women or you find something else to enslave yourself to. You are not a woman that can just sit there on the beach from here to eternity sipping up drinks in the hot sun, while harassing everyone around you for attention and to do your bidding for you. But for women, even if they had robots doing their bidding, it simply wouldn't be enough, because they'd want a man willingly to give himself over to her along with his attention. We're seeing many of them snap in a world where they have everything they need, but where they don't actually have everything they want. The man of their so-called dreams, perhaps. John asked for the part about your story about the Russian wife that assaulted you she miscalculated hitting you, and you miscalculated bringing her to the United States. She probably heard over and over again about the police and how they take the side of battered women over here. But I get it. It's all about the principle and sending her a message. That you're the man in the relationship, or were, 
and that you had all the power and she didn't. She figured you'd be her whipping boy plantation slave, and you wouldn't complain like the old five-footer she was involved with. Just think of how much abuse she put him through. The poor guy probably drank himself to death with Russian vodka that also made him blind so he wouldn't actually see her screaming face ever again. I bet he was her slave and when she met you, she thought she could upgrade to a better slave. But even though it didn't work out for her, she's probably still living in the United States and has her papers and is chasing around other men waiting to scratch their scrotums painfully with her talents to make them hers. Of course, the divorce was amicable. She probably wanted you to ask her for a divorce so it didn't look as though she was the bad one in the relationship. Now she's free to frolic in phallus fields, sitting on every cockadill that she sees. Yes, men want to be slaves to women because it's our biological imperative for procreation. Our minds make us think we've been set free when we free our willy, but we're falling happily into bondage. Instead of falling in love and becoming a slave, I fall in love with my own mind instead, because it provides me all the entertainment and inspiration I can imagine. No pun intended. I'm a slave to keeping my mind producing and thinking, and sometimes I overdo it. And I pay the price because I don't rest my mind enough, and it messes with my emotional state when it gets overactive. But overall, my left brain and right brain are a perfect couple. Male consciousness, on the other hand, usually processes information from front to back. The female consciousness processes from left to right with regards to hemispheres. So as a man, if you learn to integrate those two hemispheres, then it might make you complete. Of course, I could just be talking out of my ass here. But I've noticed that when my conscious and subconscious minds act in unison, there's nothing I can't accomplish. Because it's like having two people on the job instead of one. One person that's intuitive and creative and the other that's rational and organized. I believe that unless you learn to integrate your mind this way, it leaves you vulnerable to feeling lonely and scooping up any and all women along the way to alleviate that phony baloney loneliness. The emotion is real, but the underlying cause for it hasn't been addressed yet. My subconscious mind uses my conscious mind to express itself when using that line about the Russian puss looking for a passport. A person can be creative, but unless that creativity is funneled in the right place, it turns into self-destructive angst. Most guys are taught to funnel it into their relationships instead of into themselves and their personal development. Of course, if they didn't, then they wouldn't be able to be tricked into having a wife and kids to create the next generation. Male slavery brings salvation to the species in the form of that next generation. If only we could find a way to procreate outside that biological slavery, we could guide our development as a species. Of course, even that might be futile if Elon Musk perfects the Neuralink, and suddenly we can create a simulation of reality in our minds using technology like the one we saw in the film Inception, where time is slower and we can simply live multiple lifetimes in the span of only one human life. Anyways, that's it for today. Oh, my God.